I see Billy and Bobby and Sarah and Joanna and Rajesh and... Hey folks, it's Mike. It's March and I wanted to uh, dedicate uh, a couple of videos this month to uh, macro photography. Um, I, you know, wanted to also steal a bit of thunder from uh, the uh, NCAA basketball tournament that's, uh, that's happening this month. Couldn't tell you if it's actually started or not because I don't follow college basketball, um, or college football, or college baseball. Is it called curling? I don't know. Yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, dedicate some time to actual macro photography, which I haven't done a lot of um, overall. I mean, it's mo mostly uh, landscape, street, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, wanted to uh, show uh, show off some smaller stuff. Um, um, including the smaller brain, but whatever. Um, on that note, let's, uh, let's get to it. There are three different uh, methods that you can use to take uh, macro photographs. Um, the cheapest option is probably this, which is basically just a, a magnifying filter that you just slap onto the uh, the end of uh, end of your uh, camera lens. Um, the uh, the next option that you can use uh, for macro photography are extension tubes. Uh, basically, what you do is to attach this end of your camera and attach a lens to this end of uh, the, the the tubes and. Uh, I would recommend with when using uh, extension tubes or the uh, the magnifying um, filter uh, that you use a uh, a lens that has a uh, a longer focal length. Um, I've found that sticking to anywhere uh, between 70 and 105 uh, millimeters gets you pr some pretty good results with uh, with uh, macro photography. Um, and the third option, if you want to spend a little bit of money and uh, you uh, just don't feel like uh, dealing with uh, filters or extension tubes, is to get a macro lens. Uh, this is, um, and I will have to thank my wife, because this is a 100mm uh, uh, macro lens. Um, belongs to my wife. She loves it. She'll kill me if I do anything wrong with it. Um, and, uh, you know, much easier to, to, to really deal with because you just essentially set your focus uh, and, you know, your usual other camera settings and away you go. Uh, another thing you uh, do need to consider when uh, doing macro photography is light. Um, if you're, you know, out and about uh, taking, say, photographs of, of leaves or, uh, you know, ice crystals or that kind of thing, you just have to, you know, make sure that uh, it's really just a sunny day or a, a very um, lightly overcasted cloudy day. Uh, but if you're doing it indoors, you need light. Uh, you need uh, something like a ring light, uh, or I've got an LC, well, LED light there behind me. Um, even got one on top of my camera. Um, just uh, let me just grab it here. Uh, come on, there we go. Uh, this light right here. Um, I was using this a lot uh, to um, take the photos that I'm using in this video. You can also use uh, a flash to uh, um, help you with uh, taking uh, macro photographs. Um, you also may want to consider direction, directionality of that light. Um, just because with a flash it fires straight up or straight that way or, you know, whatever. It doesn't, you know, you can't really control it too much if you want to take a photograph of something that's, that's here. Um, even if you sort of direct it down there, you're still going to kind of miss. Um, but you can actually uh, use uh, various different uh, devices to um, direct your flash in the way that you, uh, that you want it. And, uh, I mean, one of the solutions you can do uh, for 
uh, directing the, the flash is a, uh, a DIY solution. Um, again, since my wife does more <coughs> macro photography than I do, she's kind of uh, got her own solution. Hello. Hi. Um, what uh, what she does is basically take a camera with the flash, uh, with the, the head the the flash head down, and uh, through the magic of something like that. Um, no, that's not right. Um, hang on, I have to call my wife. Honey. All right, um, after a, a bit of uh, cursing and getting my wife's assistance, uh, I've, got, uh, I've got her DIY uh, flash diffuser uh, on the correct way. Um, so yeah, flash head goes on this end, lens tube goes through that end, and any of the light coming from the flash sort of goes all around here and onto your subject, um, which is kind of what you want. Um, otherwise, you put it on the way I initially wanted to put this on, flash is going the wrong way, like in my face. I don't want that. And uh, what I can also do is to uh, show you some of the photos that my wife has actually taken with that setup. Uh, some pretty nice photos. Um, you know, she, she mainly likes to use it uh, outdoors with things like bugs and, and flowers and whatever. And, and you know, they, her photos turned out pretty good. Um, mine, not so much, but then again, I haven't used that kind of solution. So uh, yeah, on, on days where it's uh, it's not so nice outside, where you know, say windy, snowy, rainy, um, volcano, um, oh, the chance of that around here is quite quite low. You know, a little bit. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you know, whatever. Um, anyway, um, while I'm staying indoors, I usually you know will take. Uh, go to places like, say, Walker Studio in, in, in the Exchange District and take uh, photos of uh, models or go on to uh, just a nice architectural space, take some photos of, you know, nice nice decorative features and such. Um, or, well, uh, as is the case with this video, um, the tiny objects which, you know, uh, I want to uh, take photos of. And, uh, for example, um, got things like dice. Uh, I've got things like uh, pasta, which really turned out actually kind of nicer than I expected because you can really see the, the little ridge details on each of the, the pasta noodles. Uh, there's also pinto beans, which I probably should have to give back to my wife because I know on her she wants to make something out of it soon. Uh, gummy, well, they're gummy butterflies. Aside from, you know, taking macro shots of uh, food, um, you can take macro sh shots of other things with small little bits in them. Uh, like, for example, with, uh, with this camera, um, yeah, as you can see, there's a little, little bulb in there, a little flash bulb. Uh, in that little flash bulb, there's many little fine little filaments in there that uh, when the flash goes off, it kind of goes boom, you know, like any, you know, flash bulb goes. Um, it's also sort of fun little details on, uh, say, lenses where you can see a little writing there and uh, etc. And, uh, you know, taking a macro shot of it makes it look really big, really neat. And, uh, you know, when you're taking uh, uh, macro photos, you can also sort of set up a little scene. Um, like, for example, with uh, this, this photo of uh, the dice, um, I actually set up a, uh, a little dice bag with, some, uh, with a light inside the bag. And uh, with, uh, you know, basically just sort of going through there with the, the, the translucent dice that I've got in that bag. And uh, actually produced a uh, quite a nice uh, little effect. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, with my wife, uh, with her macro photography, she'll set up little 
uh, dioramas and uh, try and get uh, some of the nice small details from that. And uh, in terms of um, sort of setting up your scene uh, to, to photograph, you can uh, you can things like, use things like uh, plates. Um, you can also use sorry plate fell. Opa. Um, you can also use uh, nice nice little paper. Uh, you know whether it's texture and you know got nice little dots like this one, uh, or just you know just a plain color. Um, or even things like, uh, say, a leather jacket, or uh, basically you name it, you can try using it. Uh, you know, go as, uh, go as creative as you really want to go. Or go as basic as you want to go. Uh, I mean, if, uh, say, something like uh, just a white piece of paper works for you, go for it. And in terms of camera settings, uh, what I would suggest is to ba use the, the base ISO on your camera uh, just to reduce the, uh, the amount of uh, digital noise in the photos. Um, you can use a, uh, a shutter uh, speed of whatever works for, uh, for the scene. Um, and uh, in terms of aperture, it kind of depends. Uh, if you're looking for um, just say uh, one or two points on the photo to be in focus and everything else to be out of focus open your aperture as wide as you want um, if you want uh, more detail uh, you know close it down uh, say something like f8 f11 something like that um, but i will say um, with the aperture uh, yeah because of how close you are it may not matter too much. Um, it's just sort of a matter of playing with it, seeing what works for you. Also, um, in, when you uh, are doing macro photography, you can either um, just go with one shot, uh, if you say just want sort of one point of uh, focus on the photo, um, or if you have a you know a scene where you've got say coffee beans uh, and you want focus on multiple coffee beans. Uh, in the scene or even trying all of them in the scene. Um, what you can do is uh, take multiple shots with focus on various different beans uh, in that scene and uh, then stack them together in uh, Lightroom or any of your other favorite uh, photo editing tools. Um, so, so yeah, and uh, I, I will say that uh, um, say with one photo in particular uh, with the the dice uh, that's actually a focus stack of about uh, I think five photos um, where I basically just uh, put the point of focus on each individual dice and uh, I'll uh, show you an example of uh, focus stacking and actually kind of how easy it is um, I'll show you uh, these photos uh, that I took of, uh, of some dice and uh, you know as you can see through uh, some of the photos here where um, there's one dice here that's on focus on the right hand side uh, I've got one where's uh, you know focus uh, where's another example there we go well uh, one of the the one right out front um, and all you really need to do in, in uh, Lightroom is select those photos and just give me a second here to select them all. Uh, just have to right click, uh, choose edit in and open as layers in Photoshop and then wait the requis requisite amount of time to uh, get Photoshop to open all of those files for you. So yeah, we'll just wait. All right, here we go. Uh, all the photos are uh, now open as layers in Photoshop. Um, just because, you know, opening them as individual photos doesn't do, do much. Uh, so at this point, uh, in Photoshop, uh, just select all of the images, which basically involves clicking on one layer, holding the shift key, clicking on the, the, uh, the bottom layer uh, in, in the list of layers here. Uh, next up is to go to Edit and then uh, Auto-Align Layers. Uh, choose Auto just because really just go auto and click OK and uh, wait the requisite amount of time for Photoshop to actually stack all of them together or align them all together uh, and uh, then at this point uh, the next step is to 
while those layers are still all selected, uh, go to edit again and choose auto blend layers and choose the stack images option, which is the default option and click OK and wait the requisite amount of time for Photoshop to uh, stack them all together. There we go. All right. Um, I will probably have to get a little bit quick here because battery on my camera is dying. Uh, so at this point, uh, now that uh, it's all been stacked, just save and it'll save. And uh, once it saves, you can just go back into Lightroom, make any final adjustments that you want to, uh, to make. On that note, um, I'm going to uh, just finish off some of the uh, some of the food that I've been taking photos of, um, and uh, I will see you next time with another macro video since we're still in uh, the month of March. And uh, at this point, I'll just say do the usual: like, comment, subscribe, and uh, ciao, folks.